Hey, John here. Welcome to the new place. This is the family room. Seating for 10. It's a little more than I wanted, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> so far, we have bar stools moved into the new place, and I think this is in the shop back here, a, a hammock or two, uh, <laughs> so that we can relax. Uh, furniture's a ways out. Quite often, the next most important thing in the house, no, I, is a garage. Now, this particular garage includes a whole house vacuum system. I, I, you know, when I was a kid, I even remember some friends whose families had these in their homes. It never seemed all that practical to me. What you do is you take the giant hose part of the vacuum, you plug it into these various trap doors that are strategically around the house. They're all connected to this, through this PVC pipe here. And this is just your average, for all intents and purposes, it's a shop vac with a giant hose that lets you plug in around the house. Yeah, probably was exciting in 1971. Uh, modern vacuums, I think, are a little more practical. All right, now this particular house has a, uh, an extra garage over here that was an addition a third car garage, which I'm gonna use for woodworking and stuff like that. I got a great dumpster dive find the other day. I got two of these tables. Someone was just throwing that away. I'm gonna set that up in my garage. I'll make a perfectly good craft table type of thing. This base must weigh 90 pounds. I mean, this is a nice uh, piece of work here, you know? Other than the damage caused by someone sliding it across the parking lot to throw it in the dumpster, but otherwise it's okay, I like it. An extra refrigerator in the garage, you know, because you have to have that. Uh, previous owner left it behind. So here we go. Enter into the house. Most important place in the entire home is what used to be referred to as an in-law suite. I'm going to call it my office. <laughs> this is gonna be a room where I generally keep a regular working desk. And then over here, this carpet has to go, is where my bench is going to be moved. I'm going to, I even have a nice doorway going outside. Yeah, I had that in my old basement too, which went to the garage. Um, it's very handy to be able to get directly outside from your workspace. So right now, that's all I got. A couple of French doors over there. I'll put a couch in this area here that Sweetie refuses to allow me to move anywhere else into the home because it's my 30-year-old favorite couch in the whole world. And on this wall will be my whiteboard, and I think I'm gonna just run an L-shaped bench along there for working. And of course, if I do that, it uh, won't be the most efficient use of this particular space, and I'm real sure this carpet won't fly at all. I can barely deal with it right now because the chair wheels dig way into it. I can barely move this thing. <laughs> I want to get up and down. I'm going to have to probably put in a, um, a wood floor or something else so I can wheel around and pick up the occasional stray surface mount capacitor or something, right? Okay, what else we got going on over here? This is the uh, kitchen eating area, but we all have those. This is the dining room and the most important part of the house next to the garage and the thing that used to be the in-law suite is the basement. Okay, what do we got going on down here? All right, so let's get to work. I got one of these things. Uh, my old uh, uh, racks in my house that I'm moving out of is a giant solid cabinet all welded together. And while Pythagoras would argue it will come down those stairs, fit, tip, and get down here, I have moved them before, and they weigh a ton, and I, I'm not moving them down here, okay? So I bought one of these. Why? Because it's the cheapest uh, four-post rack that's delivered in pieces that I could find. <laughs> now, eh, I, I also know someone else that has a very similar piece of equipment, I think from the same company. It seemed acceptable. It's a little lightweight, but does the job. And like I said, it's, it's, it's inexpensive, so I thought I'd give one a try. Let's throw it together. 
So here's what it looks like when you put one of these together. I got two bolts in each of these corners. Big plate on the bottom and a little plate on the top. Yeah, a little bit flimsy, but what do you expect for the price? I, I knew that going in, so I'm not going to gripe too much about that. The fact that I actually have it at all and it looks like it's going to come together is downright acceptable. So here's the other one. You got these two rails. There's kind of a left and a right side. So, uh, because the numbers are such that while they're all the same, really, one of them would be flipped upside down if you didn't do them in the right order. And they number which, you know, you from the floor up from 1 to 42 up here. So, I don't know how much weight these things are really going to take. Uh, I'm going to grab my caliper on there and measure it. But, uh, yeah, this is not exactly as thick as the stuff that I remember from when I was younger working in, in radio stations and, and, and government labs and stuff like that. But uh, I think the actual product is rated for a thousand pounds or something along those lines and that might sound like a lot, but when each piece of equipment in here weighs, you know, 50 pounds, they add up pretty quick. So be careful about over, over rating or overweighting your rack if you do this with heavy equipment. So here's what you got to do to put these together. The, the front and back are these L-shaped pieces like this, and you can see there's, there's two holes in each of these corners, and they're off-center. So when you line these up with the 01 on the bottom and the 42 up on the top, like so and so, you slap this on and you pop these uh, screws in there. Well, the screws come in uh, this, this giant bag of stuff, and they, they give you a lot of them in here, and these seem like pretty reasonable quality here, and they're not too bad. They're all metric, so have yourself a nice set of metric hex wrenches before you do this. And it might have come with one. I didn't see it in here. Oh, it does. It has a, um, oh, there it is for real, for real jocks, you know? you got this bit that fits into uh, like an electric true driver or a drill. So, <laughs> if, if you're going to use one of these, you're going to have to supply your own. And again, you're going to want to do this right side up. Make sure that both of the ends start with the same number on the bottom. I mean, they certainly don't have to. But it makes your life a lot easier later on when you want to mount a piece of equipment in the middle of the rack with nothing else in the rack and you want to know which holes line up with the other side. <laughs> They're numbered if you do it right. All right. So both of these start with 01 on the bottom and they are staggered holes. So if you try to get really creative and put the wrong one on the left, <laughs> the bolts won't go in. So these are pretty much stupid proof other than the numbering because you could obviously put them in upside down if you really wanted to. And of course they come in these nice poly bags so nothing really is scratched. And that's nice, but in reality these things are going to be scratched to death as soon as you start using them. And it looks like they even give me one bolt extra, is that right? <laughs> no it's not. I left one out of the bottom piece. <laughs> so they give the right number of bolts. It's better than a wrong number. No spares. I said, you certainly don't need them for this. These are really huge bolts. So it's not like they're going to break, you know. So I'm going to get them all started by hand and then tighten them up with a wrench. Each of these bolts also have like lock washers on them. So hopefully they won't rattle loose over time, which they could, you know, with all the fans running and discs buzzing, you know, over the years, eh, things could rattle loose. Now at the top of this particular rail, it says UL listed, and I'm not entirely sure what kind of tests they're done on this. I mean, what are they, not like it's a shielding or anything. Maybe it's like rough edges and burrs and stuff like that. Well, you cut yourself putting them together. I don't know. Well, whatever. I feel safer already. You know, because it's listed. 
Now here's where I ultimately want the rack to go. The main rack, I'll just put these face to face like this. And I'm guessing I'm going to go with 24 inches. That's a pretty standard uh, distance between the front and back for most like shelving units and mounting brackets and stuff like that. You can see some in the 30s, but that kind of rack depth is usually for more advanced equipment that I'm going to use in here, which is probably two PCs and a cheapy little VPN router kind of thing. All right, so these are actually the sides of the uh, racks. And the way this works is you got the measurement on them. If you want your racks, the, the, the front to the back of the rack to be 24 inches apart, you slap this on here like so, and you bolt them together while you're looking at 24 inches. And those are the nuts. I'm doing the wrong end here. These are going to be M6 bolts. You know, of course, these are Phillips rather than the Allen screws. So a, I give them a minus on that one, but I can't blame them for being inconsistent. That is for the type of driver you need to assemble this thing. All right, so you can use your bolt to it like so. These have like built-in teeth, so you don't really need a lock washer. These particular nuts. For that, we use a nice number two Phillips. And I should be able to just, yeah, there you go. Tighten it up plenty, even if I hold the nut by, by hand here. All right, after you get a couple of these put together, we're going to mount them on there rails here so I stand on the base like that usually with this kind of a rack I put the M6s in here and these are pre-tapped holes specifically for this purpose and screw them in mm. they're kind of hard to get hand tightened first because they're really in the corner of the Oops, these brackets, the bolt holes are really in the corners, I meant to say. So they're hard to get in there. Come on. Okay, and there's one. All you really need to do, once you get one of these done, it'll sort of keep itself from falling over, <laughs> which is the goal right now. There's one screw in that side. One screw. I'm going to drop the other ones there. I'm hard to pull all this at once. There we go. Whoa. Get in there. You can do it. There we go. Ah, I guess you can't do it. <laughs> Come on. And of course, I'm going to gingerly drop the other rail since it's in my way, and interfering with my ability to get these things pre-started. Come on! How many computer programmers does it take to get a bolt into it? <laughs> It's a little bit easier to tip it up on its side. This is the whole thing probably weighs 10 pounds. Why not? <clears throat> and getting the bolt started on these side brackets is an incredible pain in the butt because there's no room for the handle of the screwdriver when you're really trying to get the thing going in there. So I, you know, I 
should have put the bolts a little bit further away from the ends would be nice because it's either, you know, the, when you put it on the tip of a Phillips screwdriver, it wants to align with the screwdriver, which is not aligning with the threads, and it's kind of, you can't really get your hand in there. So yeah, this is a little frustrating. I'll edit out all the curse words. But once you get the first half a thread in there, the rest is fine because you can hold the screwdriver on a little bit of an angle at that point, and it'll work just fine. All right, so now, if I was putting this in an actual data center, I'd probably bolt it to the floor. They got these holes down there and that plate to do just that. However, for me, since I have a low ceiling, it'd be easier to bolt it into the ceiling than the PC unit strut or something, which in this case is pretty important because it's kind of flimsy and I'm only going to have one of these. And if you ever put a piece of equipment in here and pull it out, this, the whole thing could easily tip over and smack you in the face. So well, that'll be the subject of another time. This thing is together uh, until we put equipment in it. It's going to be rickety, even if it was made out of, you know, really thick steel. It would do this mostly because of the way these side brackets are set in here. If it had a flat piece of metal bolted on the face of this in some way, it'd probably do a little better. Uh, uh, but yes, the equipment itself will be the thing that keeps it from uh, uh, wobbling around once you bolt in the various face plates and things like that. So here's the finished product. I put a couple of servers in here. UPS down there. If you give it a little bit of a rock, the whole thing will kind of sway back and forth this way. It doesn't do so much front to back. That's pretty rigid because the way these shelves are mounted and stuff in here. But nothing's really preventing it from going side to side. I'm not surprised at all of that fact. If I really cared, I'd put something on an angle across the back to prevent it from wobbling around, maybe. I think what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to rig up some unistrut in the ceiling and bolt the top of this into that because I have had a, in a regular industrial rack want to come down on top of me once. Uh, it's not a, 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 no, you don't want that. So I'm more concerned of it tipping over than anything else, especially a rack of this height. So I'm going to bolt it into the ceiling when I get around to it. So that's my status report for the week on the big move and the new height.